Hello everybody and welcome to the very first episode of Soundpost, in which I ask my friends what is in their case and what they've chosen to be a part of their musical voice. So Joshua Roman, here we are in Seattle at your series at Town Hall. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about your cello? Yes. Thank you, Masumi. This is Midge. Uh, Midge, Midge was, yes, Midge. <laughs> she was made in 1899 in Venice by Giulio Degani. Uh, Giulio was the son of Eugenio, which is impossible to forget because it says on the label, Giulio di Eugenio Degani, with the hand, sorry, the hand and everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it says that in the label, to do this, no. Um, it's terrible. Giulio Degani lived in Venice. He made this in his early 20s, I think, in the workshop of his father, Eugenio, who mostly, I think, I've come across violins by Eugenio more than anything else from the family. I heard that there was one more generation of makers in that uh, Degani family, but I don't know too much more about that. And this particular one made before Julio moved to Cincinnati, which I think was in the around 1920 or so. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh. Not Cincinnati, Italia. Cincinnati. What am I doing? So you have a part American cello. Well, I mean, kind of, almost. Almost, almost kind of. Almost kind this, of. This this cello has American sisters. In fact, that's amazing. For the very first time, you know, I said I have the violins of Eugenio are what I mostly. Here and I see them in orchestras around the country when I travel and play with them. Um, so I guess those are aunts and uncles or cousins of of Midge. But I, for the first time, saw an actual sister, another cello by Giulio Degani, and it was very fascinating. The kinds of things that made their way through the sound that really were the same. So how did you name your cello Midge? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> She just told me that was her name. I spent a long time on the internet with every list of names, and I won't tell you the whole story, but after a few months, I narrowed it down to five, and then kept those on the music stand. Okay. And I would just be practicing or rehearsing, and at a certain point, I would realize that there was a characteristic in the sound of the cello that one of the names did not contain, and I would cross it off the list, and at the very end, I was left with Midge. Midge is dependable, she's game, she's up for pretty much anything, is Midge short for something else? So Midge, in the naming process, discovering of the name process, is not short for anything. But it turns out that the people who actually own Midge, they were very excited when they found out that was her name because they had a, uh, an elderly relative that was the Dame Margaret. And apparently, Midge can be short for Margaret, or sometimes. So it's Midge, not Marge. <laughs> um, and why, why do you love your cello? What, what do you love about your cello? Well, at this point, I mean, when I first, when I first found Midge, it was just this amazing connection and uh, clarity of sound and focus, and I could do so much with that um, as, a, as a base for the sound and to shape. And then over the years, we've been together for 10 years now, Wow! and I've been with other cellos as well, but... Have you exchanged frames? <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. We we're talking about it. Um, but I, I do find that the time has changed my relationship with the cello, and there's much more that I know automatically where to go, and if I want to pull certain things out of the cello, um, I can do that now, and I don't know whether the cello has changed or I'm just you different change. because of it, or both. Interesting, yeah. Most likely both. Yeah. Um, would you mind playing a few notes for us? Which notes? <laughs> Your <laughs> choice. Okay.